Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft has finally made the optional bug fix C release update for November available for Windows 11 23H2 and version 22H2. So better late than never because the update was scheduled to roll out last week. But nonetheless, um, it started rolling out on a Monday. So it's strange to get a update on a Monday. And that was late yesterday in my region on the 4th of December 2023. Now, the updates that roll out near the end of every month are optional. So you don't have to install them. And if you don't install this update now, as always, it will roll out next week on the 12th with the Security Patch Tuesday update as a compulsory update. And if you do decide to install it now, it will be listed in your update history as KB5032288. And this is exactly the same update that I posted on a week or two ago when it was in preview and has now made its way into the stable version. Now, there's quite a lot going on with this update. We get five new features, some key highlights, and then a couple of bug fixes because it is a non-security update. And out of the five new features that have rolled out, we get three that are for Windows Copilot because obviously Microsoft has rolled out Copilot for Windows 11 for the desktop still in preview. So basically, in effect, it's still in beta. So obviously, they are trying to roll out improvements obviously to um, just improve Copilot on the Windows 11 desktop. Now, first of all, um, the first new improvement and new feature for Copilot, the first of three, is you can now use Copilot in Windows across multiple displays. So how you do this, obviously, is you press the Copilot uh, in the Windows taskbar button on the taskbar of the display where you want Copilot in Windows to appear. And another thing you can also do is to show Copilot in Windows on the last display that it was on. You can just press the Windows button and C on your keyboard. And there we go. But just take note, though, that uh, these multi-monitor changes for Copilot are on a controlled rollout. So Microsoft says um, they will deploy more broadly in the months that follow if you're not seeing the changes just yet. Then the next one, which I actually am quite happy to see roll out, and I would say this is the key highlight for this update regarding Copilot, is you can now use Copilot in Windows with Alt and Tab. So if you use Alt and Tab on your keyboard when Copilot is open, it will also be listed now as those previews. So Alt and Tab, and there we go. So um, the thumbnail preview for Copilot in Windows appears now among the other thumbnail previews of open Windows, as you can see. So you can switch between them using the tab keystroke but once again just take note though that this is available to a small audience initially and is still on a controlled rollout if you're not seeing it just yet but i actually think that's a nice move in the right direction and then the third new feature for copilot is uh, you can ask copilot now for help 10 times when you sign into windows using a local account which previously was not the case so obviously um, after that you must sign in using a verified account if you want help more than 10 times from Copilot for the desktop. So those are the three new features rolling out for Copilot. And then just to go through the fourth and fifth new feature, uh, in the coming weeks, Microsoft says you might see Windows Spotlight set as the default background. This might occur when your background is set to an inbox Windows image. And then the last new feature for today's um, update, which I have been posted on when it was still in preview, is regarding the home page in settings which rolled out and started rolling out with moment four this update starts the rollout of account related notifications for microsoft accounts on the settings home page but the good news if you don't want to see these account related notifications you just head to your privacy and security page head over to the general section and turn off this setting show me suggested content in the settings app so when we get options i always think that is a nice move so those are the five new features now, just to go through the key highlights for this update. Now, the first two key highlights are once again regarding Copilot. So quite a lot of attention being focused on Copilot with this update. The update improves how fast Copilot opens from the taskbar. And it also addresses an issue that affects the Copilot icon on the taskbar. Apparently, it does not show as active when Copilot in Windows is open. So um, quite a bit of attention from Microsoft being focused on Copilot. Then um, just to go through some other key highlights, uh, there are two fixes for Internet Explorer mode where it wasn't responding. 
And if we head back to our settings, and this time we head over to personalization, dynamic lighting. It also addresses an issue that affects dynamic lighting. Apparently, um, it reduced the amount of power used on your device. So that's a bit of a performance um, increase for dynamic lighting, which is also a feature that is rolled out with Moment 4. And then there are two cursor fixes, mouse cursor fixes, where the first is um, it addresses an issue that might affect the cursor when you write in Japanese. And it also addresses an issue um, with the cursor where apparently its movement was lagging in some screen capture scenario. So two little improvements for the mouse cursor. And the update addresses an issue that affects the widgets notification badge in the bottom left-hand corner of your taskbar. Apparently, uh, it is in the wrong position on the taskbar. So if you had experienced that bug, that should now be addressed. Now, if we head over to the File Explorer, we get four fixes that are rolling out for the File Explorer, which I always think is a good thing because uh, the File Explorer does need a couple of improvements in the stable version of Windows 11. I don't think it's um, performing as expected yet. Um, apparently, when you press Shift and F10, the short context menu didn't open. So that bug has been addressed. And when you did not expect um, File Explorer Windows, could appear in the foreground. So that's another bug that's been addressed. And it also addresses an issue in File Explorer. Apparently the options in the left pane didn't show the right state and were appearing in the wrong state. And then the fourth fix for File Explorer, apparently it affects the shortcut context menu once again. Its performance is now better when you open it on the desktop and in File Explorer. So I always think it's a good thing, especially with the File Explorer, because the File Explorer is not up to par in my opinion, in the stable version. So four fixes rolling out for uh, File Explorer. And then the last key highlight, the update addresses an issue that affects Narrator. Apparently it failed to open on the setup screen when you install Windows. So those are the key highlights and the five new features. And because this is a non-security bug fix update, I've just picked out a couple of um, bug fixes that you may be interested in. So if you want to stick around. The first is the update addresses an issue that affects .rar files. They displayed as if they were empty in File Explorer and it also um, affects the Netherlands time zone. It adds the recent man-made landmass outside of Rotterdam to the shape files and the update addresses an issue that might affect Microsoft OneNote. When you use a pen, right click to open it, um, that might fail. And then three more to go. It addresses an issue that stops you from reconnecting to an existing remote desktop session. Um, instead, you get a new one. So it addresses that bug with a remote desktop. And it also addresses an issue that affects Windows Sandbox. If the locale, location of your machine is not US English, File Explorer would stop responding. And it addresses an issue that affects certain PCs. Uh, it stops them from downloading speech recognition packages. That's also been addressed. So quite a lot going on with this um, optional bug fix C release update. And um, if you have decided to install the update, if we head over to Winver, just type that into the search. Winver, this is about uh, Windows. It takes us to that menu. If you are running version 23H2, the OS build is 22631.2792 and if you are running 22H2, the point release stays the same but the OS build will be 22621. So that's more or less what's new. As mentioned, five new features and quite a lot of bug fixes with this month's or November's update, KB5032288, which is the latest optional update for Windows 11. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.